Hello and welcome to today's special webinar event titled Security is a Team Sport Drive Efficiency with an Integrated Security Stack. Today's webinar is sponsored by Security Scorecard and produced by Actual Tech Media. My name is Scott Becker. I'm from Actual Tech Media and I'm excited to be your moderator for this special event. Now before we get uh, to today's great content, um, I do want to uh, go through a few things you should know about this webinar. First off, we want this to be a very educational event for you, so we encourage any and all questions in the questions box in our webinar control panel. Not only will we have team members responding to questions during the live event, we'll also have a dedicated Q&A session at the end of the presentation where we'll discuss in greater detail some of the top questions that you ask. Second, in the handout section of your webinar control panel, you'll find that we're offering several resources. There's a link to get started with Security Scorecard. You'll also find a link to the Gorilla Guide Book Club where you can get access to actual Tech Media's great printed resources on technology topics, as well as a link to the ATM Event Center where you can see details on more events like this one. So I, I encourage you to download those handouts now and share them with your friends and your colleagues. Third, at the end of this webinar event, we will be awarding a $300 Amazon gift card to one lucky attendee on the live event. If you're watching this webinar on demand, I'm sorry, the drawing has already occurred. Now, if you are the winner, um, you can choose to donate the value of that gift card to one of our selected charities. Thanks to generous prize winners on previous actual tech media events, thousands of dollars have been doted donated to charity, so thank you in advance if you make that choice today. Official terms and conditions of today's prize drawing can be found in the handout section of your console. And finally, one of the best benefits of this event is the opportunity to ask a question of our expert presenters. To help encourage your questions, we have a special additional prize for you. That's another Amazon gift card, this one for $50 for the best question. So at the end of the event, we'll look at all the questions, pick out the very best one, and contact that prize winner. And with that, let's get to today's fantastic content. I'm excited now to bring on our expert presenters, Miriam Mir, uh, Director of Global Campaigns, and Anna Livingston, Sales Engineer, both from Security Scorecard. And now I'm going to turn things over to Miriam to get us started. Thank you for that introduction, Scott. We're thrilled to be here today to talk to everyone about how security is a team sport and specifically how to drive efficiency with an integrated security stack. With that, first of all, I'd like to introduce Anna, who is with myself here today. Anna, want to go ahead and introduce yourself to the audience? Yep. Hey, everyone. Nice to meet you. Uh, my name is Anna Livingston. I'm one of the sales engineers here at Security Scorecard. I'm really excited to speak to you about our integrations and how you can use them to operationalize our product. Awesome. Thank you, Anna. And just for everyone in the audience, Anna is one of our best here. So excited to see what she's going to show you today. And my name is Mira Mayer. I'm Director of Global Campaigns here on our marketing team at Security Scorecard. So with that, I'd love to get started and just tell you a little bit more about Security Scorecard and Security Ratings. We're the leading security ratings and questionnaire management platform in the market, and we enable organizations to inst instantly rate and understand the cybersecurity risk of any company in a non-intrusive way. So that means it's both from an outside-in perspective with our ratings product and an inside-out perspective with our questionnaire management platform, as well as with our integrations. Um, on the right here, you can see a sample of what a scorecard looks like and some of the data that you get um, on about in an easy to understand way for your own security posture or any of the vendors that you're monitoring. Um, and now I'm just going to pass it on to Anna to walk over how we get to this score and what a security ratings means specifically for you and your tech stack. Thanks, Miriam. Yeah, I mean, before we even talk about, you know, how to operationalize, it's good to understand what it is we're actually collecting. Um, so you may be familiar with scorecard and our ratings. So we do an A through F, just like in grade school. Um, but how do we get there? Uh, we start with data collections. We have sensors across the internet crawling for information. You know, we're running our own scanning, web app scanning, and port scanning. We do our own sinkhole and collect malware data. Uh, so we have quite a lot of information. 
Uh, from there, we actually attribute it to companies, you know, based off of their IP or domain space. Um, then we roll up the actual data collected into what we call the 10 threat factors. Uh, you'll see them listed here. A lot of them should be familiar to you, application security, network security, things like that. Uh, only one that may be novel is our Cuba score. That is a proprietary score. Uh, it just has some good information about exposed subdomains and things like that. Um, and each of those factors gets a score, which then will also roll up into the overall grade of an A through F. Uh, these are continuous scores, so they will change over time. Um, so as we collect more data and as the data changes on companies, the score may go up and down for the threat factors as well as the overall grade. Um, so security ratings uh, help power um, data-driven workflows through actually being able to make sense of the information we're collecting, right? So there's a lot of tools that you may already have in your tech stack that we can integrate with to pull this information into, um, right? It's not very useful to have all this information, but not be able to see it where you need it. So if there's a tool that you already live in today, uh, we can pull our ratings data in there so that you can better build out workflows for the various teams within your security or you know, your compliance organizations. Awesome, thank you, Anna, for that overview of security ratings and quick preview of some of the integrations. But before we jump into how ratings helps power more productive workflows in all these tools for you and your team, let's talk a bit about more about what it takes to secure an ecosystem. So I love this slide over here because it really shows how keeping a company and an ecosystem secure takes a lot of work. And in talking to our customers, also based on market research, we know that you work across multiple tools. This diagram over here might seem overwhelming, yet unfortunately, maybe a bit too familiar for our audience. And I think what's even more shocking and what we found is that companies deploy 47 different cybersecurity solutions and technologies. However, the problem that we see is that a majority of companies, including a lot of our customers that we talk to every day, aren't getting the full value from these investments. And that can be for many reasons, whether these tools are just being siloed into one team and not being trained across the rest of the team, or just because they're not being integrated correctly. Um, and some of what we've seen is that 50% of experts don't know how well the tools they've deployed are working. And that's often due to a non-integration of security tools as one third of security experts say that that is a major roadblock. Um, additionally, I think we all know and have seen all the stats about how it's difficult to hire and train a cybersecurity workforce. But with that in mind, 20%, so almost one fifth of organizations say that they have limited or no resources at all to respond to a security incident. And I think it's really timely um, time right now to talk about this because as we're going into 2022 and preparing our security plans, how can you be prepared and you know, not be one of this 20%, be prepared to be an organization that does have the resources and the tools to respond to a security incident. And that's one of the things that we're often asking ourselves um, and our customers are asking is how can we help bring security teams enhance visibility to risk through our ratings, help power more efficient workflows with this data that we bring to them, and ultimately help you and help our customers maximize investments in our security stack. And that brings us to our marketplace of integrations that we've built, and this is what Anna was alluding to earlier, but we've partnered with leading security vendors and continue to add even more every day to build the largest ecosystem of cyber risk ratings. And the reason this is really important is because, as we saw before, security teams, vendor risk management teams, compliance teams are working across so many different tools that aren't speaking to each other. So whether it's your GRC solution, your SIM, your ITSM tool, or even other data providers such as um, CSC or Cyborg Angel or Darknet provider that you are getting data from, it's really important to have all these talking to each other. And that's what we'll spend the rest of this time talking about is showing you how you can integrate your tech stack to make security a team sport and work more efficiently to drive your business forward. 
So I'm going to pass it back to Anna now, who's going to walk through some of the workflows that our customers are using to work more efficiently and work better as a team. Great. Thanks. Um, so there are three workflows that we wanted to focus on for the purpose of this conversation. Obviously, there's a lot of other integrations that we have, um, as Miriam just showed, right? There's a lot of different tools that you can bring our data into. Um, these three use cases are kind of the, the larger ones for, um, you know, our customers and, you know, more popular that we see across the user base. Um, so we wanted to start out with ITSM. Uh, then we would move on to our vendor risk management or GRC tools. Um, and then, right, looking at continuous monitoring with messaging tools like Slack and Teams. So for our ITSM and SIM integrations, um, these types of integrations allow for you to integrate our data, um, get you know, instant notifications based off of updates within the platform, uh, which can lead to other actions, right? Like a ticket being created or you know, some kind of a log notification so that you can come in and actually see what's going on in the security scorecard platform uh, through that other tool. This can help you build out workflows, whether it be, you know, creation of, um, you know, kind of incident response or, you know, some kind of response. If you want to go into the scorecard platform, dig deeper into the information or see specifically, right, what's going on and what has to be actioned. Um, to walk you through that workflow, so JIRA is one of our, you know, pretty popular applications for setting up um, ITSM notifications. To get into there, you would just go into our marketplace and select the JIRA app. Um, luckily for us, you know, JIRA is actually one of our web hooks, so it integrates directly into our rule builder. Um, you would actually be able to just install it, right? Plug in your API key from JIRA, um, set up different rules uh, to get take a little sidebar. A rule for security scorecard is actually just a notification. You set up conditions that you want to be notified on. These could be really high level, like a grade dropping, you know, A to F or A to C, or you could be notified on specific things like a CVE being detected on your scorecard, uh, or even a breach being detected on one of your vendor's scorecards. So there are a lot of things you could be notified on here. Um, and you'll see on the next slide, uh, we walk you through the actual rule builder creation. You'll be able to select, uh, create a JIRA ticket from under there. You'd see the uh, JIRA icon, and then you'd be able to select where within JIRA you actually want that, tech, uh, that ticket to be sent to. So if at the end of the day, you want all scorecard issues for your ticket, um, for your scorecard sent to the SecOps team, you can have it sent there. And then maybe you'll have another JIRA project for you know, your vendor risk management team. So you can really get creative with where you want to send these notifications. Um, and we always recommend, you know, set up a lot of rules and then maybe whittle it, whittle it down and see, right, what is too much for you? What is just enough? That way you only get notified on you know, what you need to know. And then you can come into the platform only when you need to. Um, and this, yep, this is just showing you what the actual uh, JIRA ticket would look like. Uh, so you'll be able to see, right, AT&T's overall score drop from you know, X to X. Uh, that way, right, you can comment, bring your teammates in, assign it to someone else. That way it ends up with the right person. And again, right, you're not having to go into a security scorecard to look and see, you know, did at and score drop? Uh, you can just get that notification in JIRA. Makes your life a little bit easier. Um, and then Another big use case for a security scorecard, right? Like a lot of our bread and butter is within the vendor risk management space. So we have tons of GRC and VRM teams on the platform today. A lot of times they'll already be using another service and you'll see our service partners listed at the bottom. Um, they'll usually already be using some other type of GRC tool um, and it's helpful to bring our data into there. That way you can uh, you know, streamline your workflows that you're already using in the other platform and then enhance your assessments with the data that we're bringing in. That way, right, all of your third-party data lives in one space. Um, just one quick look here into you know, one of the vendors that we work with. So specifically, I pulled a screenshot from OneTrust, um, right? GRC is all different um, a few different ways. Uh, but they have similar functionality. So you'll be able to pull in similar types of information. 
Uh, you'll see here right on the landing page of your third parties, uh, right there in the middle, you'll see the security scorecard grade listed as well as the rating. So you get the alphanumeric rating for the company themselves. Um, that way, right, it's actually baked into the data itself. Um, and this is updated uh, daily. You can set updates for it. That way, you know, you have the most recent data within the platform. So if you're evaluating Atlassian today, you can understand that they have, you know, uh, an A or, you know, a B. That way you have the data for them. Additionally, um, for most of our GRC products, you can build in a types of workflows. So this is just specifically, again, pulled from OneTrust, but right, most of them have similar functionality. So you can look for specific triggers uh, or conditions within the platform. You would just set it to pull from our API endpoint. And right, if you pulled from there and something had changed or there was new data, uh, you could trigger workflows within here. So maybe it would send an assessment or queue up an assessment. Uh, it could alert one of your teammates to come in and see what had changed within that vendor's environment. That way, again, you're not digging through security scorecard for the data. It's being pulled directly in and then triggering a workflow for you so that you know, you're ready to go once you log into that GRC platform and follow through with you know, whatever tasks you need to. Yeah, and I just want to jump in. I love these GRC and VRM workflow integrations because specifically if you're already working with one of these workflow tools or your team's just building your VRM program and you're looking for one to work with, finding one that works with security scorecard or your security ratings provider is a great way to choose one and just drive more efficiency across your whole team and VRM process. All right, Anna, I'm going to pass it back to you for our last one, which is our workflow apps here. All righty. Um, again, these are more apps that work within our rule builder function. Um, like we showed Jira, we also have integrations with Zapier, PagerDuty, Zendesk, and Microsoft Teams. Um, you know, a lot of people are using messaging apps like Slack and Teams today. Uh, they, you know, set notifications to go in there from other tools. Um, so no, why not set up a channel for, you know, security scorecard alerts? Um, so we allow for you to integrate very easily with these through a webhook. That way you have real-time notifications being sent to you. Uh, people have Slack on their phones, um, Teams on their phones and PagerDuty. So if you want you know, a notification sent here, you can have them right away um, and right in the format that you're used to seeing. Um, setting these up, really easy. Um, again, you're going through our rule builder. So everything's already laid out for you, what conditions you wanna set. Um, here at Scorecard, we actually have this one set up. So if you, you know, a new breach is reported for specific vendors in a portfolio, you know, we get notified via a channel. That way, right, you can get real-time notifications sent to you. If you have a whole group of people you want to be notified, it's really easy. You just add them into that channel, and then they'll all be in the same, you know, pool with you. They understand the same information. It doesn't have to go out via an email. Um, so it's all right there for you in front of your face. Um, and just a quick look at what that looks like. Um, you know, you have the channel set up. You can add as many team members as you want in here. You can also make it a private channel if you want to send, you know, private information and keep it, you know, just to your group. Um, and then you'll be able to view the alerts in here each time the rule was triggered. It would just push an alert. Um, and then, right, you can set up multiple, multiple rules for one channel. So it doesn't just have to be, you know, these specific issues I want to be notified on. It can be here are a set of issues that I want set to this channel um, and you can you know, have them all sent there. And again, right, it's on Slack, it's super easy. Uh, you can get it sent to your phone and that way, right, again, you're a tool you're already using um, and you build that into your workflow. Awesome, thank you, Anna. And I think these are particularly good, especially as we're seeing more and more teams kind of move off email and move into these messaging apps, particularly as we've been seeing more phishing alerts or emails and just email spam. So I think it's it's also super timely for these Slack alerts, um, Microsoft Teams, and all these other tools that we're seeing modern security teams working in. Yeah, definitely. I mean, emails are so cluttered today as is. Um, lots of CISOs and security professionals have, you know, salespeople, um, spammers, fishers. They have all kinds of people in their inbox, and it's quite a lot to deal with. 
Um, so right, sending things to Slack or Teams is just a little bit easier um, and it's a lot less cluttered so you can make sense of the information fairly quickly. Awesome. So, I mean, just to recap, recap everything we, we went through, I think what really sums it up is that integrating your whole tech stack helps accelerate risk mitigation for your team and ultimately drive your business forward and make security a business enabler as it should be. But I mean, today we really just talked about three of the ways that um, that we can help you do this and three ideas of ways that you can accelerate risk mitigation, whether it's for your vendor risk management team through our GRC tools by integrating security ratings and getting that continuous real time data plugged into your VRM or um, GR GRC tool and being able to take action for your third parties right away. The other one is, of course, security teams and arming your security team within their ITSM tool so that there's tickets automatically created and assigned whenever something takes place in scorecard. And then lastly, and I think these are super interesting or just my personal favorite, is our workflow apps with um, different types of tools that not just security teams, but teams across the whole company, whether it's your marketing team or um, your operations team are using. And that way it can also really help make security a priority for everyone if everyone is getting these real-time alerts on the apps and tools that they care about and they use. Anna, yeah. anything you want to add here as a recap? <laughs> yeah, um, and I definitely agree with your point, Miriam. You know, it doesn't just have to be the security team. Um, one of the reasons security scorecard was created was to make security more understandable for both technical and non-technical people, right? Um, we have all kinds of users on the platform. Um, some are super technical, you know, your security researchers and analysts. Um, and then others are, you know, they work in procurement or legal. Um, and they might not have the same tech savvy skills, but they still understand the information that's on the platform. Um, so it's good to get everybody involved that way, right? Everybody has an understanding of, you know, what's going on here with our security of ourselves, as well as our vendors and third parties. Um, so it's easy to understand information. And yeah, I agree. It's, it's good for the whole team to get everyone involved. Awesome. And just for everyone here, I mean, one of the things that we're most proud of is making security ratings available for every company for free forever. That means that every organization, including yours, can have access to your scorecard and get that real time visibility to fix your security ratings and make the world a safer place. And obviously then start integrating these security ratings into your stack. So if you're interested in getting started, setting up your free account, or even learning about more of our integrations, because Anna really just scratched the surface today, then um, Anna's email is right here and she'd be happy to help you get started right away. It's a Livingston at securityscorecard.io. Yep, and I promise my inbox is not as cluttered <laughs> as many other people's. So I can get out to you. And if you need more information, I'm happy to help. If not, we can always set up a Slack connections, which is another <laughs> great way to add people from outside an org these days. Yeah, yeah, Slack me. I always answer Slack. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you, Anna. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today. It's been great. Um, showing you a bit more about security ratings or integrations and most importantly how you can make security a team store sport with an integrated tech stack with that we're gonna open up the floor to any audience questions okay great job miriam and anna really interesting introduction to security scorecard there it's a fascinating solution with a lot of applications so we do have some questions coming in for you let's get started with the first one they're asking What's the platform? Is it SaaS or there, you know, is there software that has to be installed or, you know, agents? Like how, how does it work from that end? Yeah, so um, we're, we're a SaaS platform. Um, and what we do is we scan from an external viewpoint. So we're agentless at this point. Okay. Um, we run our own external scans. It's basically, you know, what we say is like, we see what a hacker could see, right? So we're running, you know, really basic like open source scans that see, right, here's what, you know, services you have running. Um, you know, we're not doing any crazy like secret sauce, like scanning in your network, hacking into you. 
um, right? That'd be breaching some boundaries, but what we're doing is an external scan to see how your environment looks from the outside in. Um, and then, right, accessing our platform is, is super easy. Uh, you can actually just sign up for an account on our website, but um, you would just set up a login, you could come in and then, you know, paying customers can search and look at your scorecard, you know, see what you look like from the outside in. Yeah, and the one thing I'll add also is that free account can be set up right away. We're continuously monitoring over 10 million companies, which means we probably have your organization scorecard already there. And then getting set up with our licenses to track your vendors can also get started right away since we are a SaaS platform and every um, customer does get a customer success manager to help them through that journey too. Great. Um, and, and so that's a really interesting question too. You know, for for customers that, or, or for people who are your customers, are they able to see any of those scores for, you know, potential vendors that they're evaluating? Or is that really something that they need to set up and the, the vendors would, would give them permissions to do that. Yeah, so you can look up the score of any company in the world in like a few seconds, basically, because what we do is 100% from the outside in. It doesn't require consent from other organizations. Um, so we have companies who use us for a variety of use cases. You know, some of them include M&A, uh, you know, private equity companies who use us to look at potential investment targets, um, so some confidential things that right, a company may not even know that they're being looked at or evaluated uh, because of the nature of our platform, right? It's all from the outside in. Um, so it really doesn't require any interaction with the end company, um, you know, unless you were to engage them and, you know, ask them to take a look at their score. Yeah, and just to add the way that our licensing works, it is by the number of vendors you monitor. So when you sign up for a security scorecard license, everyone, of course, gets access for free to their own scorecard um, indefinitely. But then if you want to start monitoring your vendors, you would pay by slot. So if you want to monitor 10 vendors to 100, that's how it would determine how many companies you can monitor continuously at once through the security scorecard platform or by piping in the data into your other tools. Really interesting. Um, you know, Say you get a, a score for your own company and, you know, there are, you know, it, it's relatively low. What, what do you do ultimately, you know, not just to improve the, the score, obviously, but also to, you know, ultimately improve the, um, you know, the security of, of your environment? It, does, does the tool itself uh, point to anything or, you know, are there best practices as far as that goes? Yeah, so with all of the issues, uh, we call them issues, they're essentially what's sitting inside the 10 threat factors. Um, with all of the issues that we surface, if we're finding them in your environment, um, right, we'll always tell you where exactly we saw it. We give you all of the evidence uh, that we found in our, you know, our scanning that proves that you have the issue. That way you can first of all go track it down. Uh, we have a full knowledge base as well as references within the platform that will basically tell you here's what we're looking for, um, you know, and here's how you can fix it. And then finally, you can actually submit issues to us uh, via the platform using our resolve button. Let us know that you've fixed the issue at hand. Uh, we'll manually rescan it and then get back to you, right? We do validate that you fixed it, but as long as it's fixed, um, we will take it off of your scorecard. Uh, so you can actually bring your score up, um, you know, pretty quickly if you can get some of these issues fixed. Um, so we'll help you map out a path for you to get to a better score. You know, we're always willing to work with companies to improve their score, but then, you know, things do change over time. So that's where the integrated workflows can come in handy. Uh, you know, you can set up notifications so that, you know, as things change, you can continue to come into the platform and see, you know, what needs to be fixed, um, you know, what new issues we're surfacing. Yeah, and the, the two other things I'll add there, Anna, and you did a great job covering it, is um, even within our platform, we have something called a score planner. So if you come in and see that your grade for your organization is a C, our score planner will automatically build a plan for you and tell you exactly what issues you need to remediate to get your score to where you want to be. And then the other part in collaboration is one of the key things in our platform. So not just collaboration within your internal teams, but also collaboration with your vendors. We make it really easy for you to invite your third party vendors 
into the platform and then they get access to their scorecard and can leverage all these tools, including the score planner to improve their own scores. Um, and typically what we see is that rated companies are invited into the platform by their by their business partners that have a low grade, so a C, D, or F, typically exhibit a seven to eight point improvement within three months, which is a huge improvement, um, super easy to do, and it's just as easy as being, being invited into a scorecard from um, by one of your, your partners and working to improve your score. So that's part of our mission, which is to make the world a safer place, which is both through your own organization and obviously through your vendor ecosystem. Okay, great. Um, here's, here's one. Can I create an integration with a platform that's not currently in your marketplace? Yep, so definitely. Um, there are actually two different ways that you can integrate with other platforms. Uh, so our rule builder function, which we spoke to today, actually all operates through webhooks. Um, so we do have the ability to build out custom webhooks. So if there's another tool that you use, and a lot of them do within like security stack, um, we'll accept webhooks. So you can actually set something up, uh, build out a custom integration and you know get notifications sent there. Um, alternatively, we do have a full developer hub for you know, our API endpoints. Um, so if there's another tool that you use that can ingest our data, um, we'll help you map out how to connect those tools and bring the correct information in. So we try to play friendly with you know, as many tools as we want. Um, so if there's something that's in the mark, not in the marketplace today uh, that you have in your tech stack that you wanna bring information into, um, you know, we're more than happy to work with you to pull that uh, information in there. And is there a, a fee to connect uh, security ratings to other platforms? Um, so our API is free for us. Um, again, yeah, we're trying to kind of play nice with a lot of different platforms, but for some of our partners, uh, they may have fees and they can vary by like integration or right installation fees. Um, so a lot of partners might, might not have them, but some of them may. So if you're going to set up a connector, um, it's always good to check with right the second service partner to see if there's additional fees that they might charge. Uh, you know, they might just be at installation or they might be yearly. Uh, so it really does depend. Okay, and we're gonna continue the, the Q&A here, but I did want to uh, put up a poll here just, you know, for any information that, that you might like about uh, security scorecard. Uh, so you can just go ahead and uh, if you would kindly fill that in while we're, while we're going here, that would be great. Um, Miriam, are you, are you ready for a couple more questions? I am. Super. So um, actually, first off, we, we also had a, a comment from uh, Alison saying, very good support team. Keep it up. Uh, reference to security scorecard. So that's, uh, that's Thank that's you for that. That is something we are very proud of. Um, we did have a question from uh, Warren, who's wondering if your product is currently being used at any educational institutions. Is that is that one of the verticals that uh, that that takes advantage of Security Scorecard? It absolutely is, and more so. Our CISO Mike Wilkes came from NYU, so hmm. um, higher education and educational institutions are one of our um, best customers. Happy to provide Great. more info on that as well. Great. Um, we also have a question here about how easy is it to isolate the problematic areas, the source of origin and the security score? It's a, it's a really interesting question. So like if, you're, if your score is lower than, uh, you know, than you'd like for it to be, you know, how, how easy is it to, to figure out what's driving that? Yeah, absolutely. That's a great question. And that's something that we make really easy. So when you're looking at a scorecard, whether it's your own or one of your vendors, if you drill into the 10 factors, each factor is made up of various different issues that are divided by the severity. And then you can actually look at each individual issue and see exactly what IP address the issue is coming from um, and how to resolve the issue. And then within it, you can actually let us know whether that issue does not exist, whether you resolve it, or also build your own score plan that will tell you a step-by-step -step guide on what you need to fix to get to where you want to be. Okay, super. 
Um, we also had a question from Thomas, and he's, he, he phrased it two different ways. He's asking, are credentials required to get the best results, or are credentials required to get the best info about vulnerabilities? Um, and and I'm, I'm actually not sure with Thomas's question whether he's asking, like, do you need to have an account with security scorecard, you know, to, to see the best information, or whether it's like for, for security scorecard to... Um, to sort of scan your environment if it, if security scorecard requires credentials. So maybe Thomas, if if you want to clarify on that question, um, that'd be great. But but Miriam, I don't know if there's anything you you want to say about it based just based on the uh, the phrasing there. Yeah, I can just go ahead and address both. So okay. first of all, in terms of our scanning, all of our scanning is outside in. And that what, what that means is that it's all information that's externally available and we're constantly scanning the, the full IP um, v6 space. So we are able to pick up everything without credentials and all of our information that we gather for companies is without credentials because it is this outside in view as we call it. And it's all information that's externally available without going into an organization's network. Now, the second part in terms of getting information. Um, as we mentioned before, security scorecard, we provide scorecards for free to a company forever. So you can look at your own organization's scorecard and access it as much as you want. And that's easy to do by just creating a free account on our website. Okay. I hope that Super. answers that, Scott. <laughs> it, it sounded it sounded like a, a thorough answer on both parts to me. Um, one thing for, uh, from from Kale, and this may be related. Kale was asking: Is is there a consent management function uh, built in for consent to hold uh, personal identifiable information? Um, and I, I would imagine that's not an issue based on that outside in perspective. But I, I, what's what, what's your um, what's your view on that? Yeah, absolutely. I mean. So our MSA and all of our privacy is available on our website. So you can look at the, the legality and consent piece there. In terms of holding any private information, because it is an outside in view, we don't have anything that's private. What we do have is actually a new feature called our evidence locker. And that's an opportunity for you to upload any compliance documents for your organization, such as your um, ISO certification or um, or any penetration test or something that you've had. And because that is private information, when you upload that, you're able to control who it's visible to and if other organizations can request it. So when there is private information to a company such as that, we we do make sure that there's consent and privacy forms. Okay, great. Uh, question from Chad, when, when issues are found and resolved, how long is the, the history retained? Um, the history is retained for a year. So you can look back at your own scorecard or any vendors that you follow and see that historical information. Okay, great. Um, and it looks like one more question here from uh, Jeremy. He says, I'm looking for security information on our vendors, but our purchasing department is looking for other information about the vendors too. Can they use this for non-security related information as well? So I, I guess, are there any hooks into other public data sources on these companies or, or is it pretty much purpose built? This is this is about the security scorecard and you, you need other tools for that kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, that's a great question. So currently all the information we have is security based. Um, we do have a questionnaire platform as well and this new evidence locker where companies can upload any types of documents which could be security related or non-security related. However, one of the efforts and areas that we're expanding to with our marketplace is getting more types of data outside of security data into it. So possibly an integration with um, Dun & Bradstreet or something like that. So if there are any integrations you are interested in, um, you can definitely let us know and we can look into them as well. But if not, another way to get that information in a single pane of glass is by integrating our ratings into other data sources that you might be leveraging. Okay. Great. Well, it looks like we've run through most of the questions here. Um, Miriam, we, we do have the get started with questions. security. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, they were. Yeah, absolutely. 
Uh, we do have that Get Started with Security Scorecard link in the handout section. And as, as you and Anna mentioned, uh, her email, a Livingston at secure securityscorecard.io is a place for, for more info, but any other recommendations for, uh, for getting the most out of a trial? Um, no, we definitely encourage you to sign up, start managing your own scorecard, see what you can do. And then, you know, someone mentioned that our support team is great, which is true. If you want to take it to the next step, they're there for you. We also recently launched professional services. So if you do want to do a professional service assessment to understand your current third party risk management program and how security ratings can plug right into it. That's also a great way to just start operationalizing it and get the most value of it right away. Fantastic. Well, thanks so much for being here. Great presentation. Appreciate all the answers in the, in the Q and a, uh, this has been a really informative session. Thank you, Scott. And thank you everyone for joining. We really enjoyed um, chatting with you today and telling you more about our integrations. And uh, before we wrap up, we do have one more piece of business. It's the $300 Amazon gift card prize drawing. And the winner of the $300 Amazon gift card is Pep Barameda from California. So congratulations to Pep. We'll be in touch to get you your card. And with that, on behalf of uh, the actual tech media team, I want to thank Miriam and Anna for putting together this really informative presentation for all their insights in the Q&A. And I'd also like to thank Security Scorecard for making this event possible. And last but not least, I'd like to thank all of you for attending, uh, and as Miriam said, for your, for your great questions here. So that concludes today's event. Have a great rest of your day.